Hi everyone, it's Ardeth, and I'm really excited about today's video because it focuses on some things I love. Christmas, gorgeous layering dies, and easy to add lights. These cards are really special, and I know you're going to love them. I started by creating three beautiful Christmas cards with some layering dies from Birch Press Design. I did some rich ink blending with my Catherine Pooler inks for my backgrounds, and I included glitter cardstock for sparkle. These gorgeous detailed dies always make impressive cards, and the precision in them makes them really easy to work with. And I was feeling really happy with these cards, and then I thought of a way to really take them to the next level. So today, I'm not going to focus on tips for working with the dies themselves. In the end screen, I'll link to a video you can watch to see how to use the dies to get a ton of different looks. I'm also not going to focus on the ink blending, although I will tell you my secrets for getting these amazing deep colors. I am going to talk about how I made these cards really special by adding a light up feature and at the end of the video you'll be able to see them in action so you can get a really good idea of how beautiful they are. Let's start with the snowflake. Here's the before picture. This card is four and a half inches square, which is my favorite format. I love the modern feel of the square, but it still fits into an A2 envelope. I used two of the layers of the Glitz Snowflake layering dies, and I actually stacked four of layer B together so that the sparkly layer A will literally stand out from my night sky. I used one of the glitter cardstocks from the Memory Box Delicate Pastels paper pad, and I embossed a piece sentiment from the Memory Box Tidings Wreath Set with white embossing powder. My background is white Nina cardstock that I blended with blue Catherine Pooler inks. I went over the whole panel with Fiesta Blue, and then I blended Juniper Mist, which is navy blue, around the edges, lightening my touch so that the darker blue fades toward the center and the Fiesta Blue kind of glows. Now to get that really rich, deep navy, I added Queen for a day, which is actually dark purple, just to the edges of the panel. I went over the colors in the blended areas quite a few times. To get a really rich background, you can't be afraid of using a lot of ink and spending a bit of time doing it. I added texture by spritzing the panel with water and lifting it off with a paper towel. This technique is perfect for a snowy night. So now for the light up feature. Let's talk about the supplies I need for this. First, here are the lights. These are easy lights from Pear Blossom Press and I've put a link to my supply list in the description below. I've used these lights before and they're so easy. There's no circuit building. Just slide the battery in and press a button and three little LEDs light up. That's really how easy it is. Next, I use some Lawn Fawn Pearlescent Vellum. This will help hide the wires and diffuse the lights a bit and make them look like they're more than they really are. We'll talk about that more in a minute. You could use regular vellum, of course, but this has such a pretty shimmer on it. The other thing you'll need is some foam tape. The first step is to cut the hole, back it with vellum, and fill it with the die cut. I used temporary adhesive here so that I could show you both the before and after of each card. First I take the die cut off and then I remove the panel. To create the hole I used the layer B snowflake die. These snowflakes are all different sizes so that you get the layering look on the inside and the outside of the lines if you know what I mean. So it's important to use the right one. I positioned it on my card and I ran it through my Gemini Junior. The snowflake is big enough that it actually cut my panel apart a bit, and of course I ended up with a blue snowflake that I can save for another project. For this card I have a 4 by 4 inch panel of the vellum, so I can just glue the blue panel onto it to create my top panel. It's a bit like putting a puzzle back together, and the only trick is to make sure that you have that shimmery side of the vellum facing up so that you'll get the benefit of the shimmer. It just took me a moment to glue the pieces together, and there was a slight bit of vellum hanging over the edge, but I just trimmed that off with my scissors. So now I've got a blue panel with a snowflake-shaped hole in it that's covered by pearlescent vellum. I used liquid glue on the back of the snowflake die cut, and I popped it right into the hole. The next step is to add the lights. There are three little LEDs along with wires which connect to a battery pack. You need to decide where you want to have your lights. You can put them all together in the center, but I decided to separate them and try to get the light traveling up all the arms of the snowflake. I separated the three lights from each other and then I placed the first light down and taped it in place with just some clear scotch tape. 
Then I counted around the six areas to find where the next one would go. I decided I liked the positioning of my second one better, so I went back and fixed the first one. Then I put the third one in place and I held it down with more tape. Before doing anything else, I flipped it over to try it out and make sure I was happy with the placement of the lights. You can see how pretty that vellum is and the added benefit of making sure that the wires and the actual little lights are not visible. Next comes the part that I'm not so good at. I've seen others wrap their wires so neatly that the back of the card is almost as pretty as the front. Not me. I'm just glad that no one ever has to see this part of the card once it's done. You want to kind of wrap up the excess wire without creating any sharp folds or bends, which might damage the wire and prevent your lights from working. The next step is to glue the battery pack in place where you want it. I used a piece of strong double-sided tape to do that, and I placed it so that the switch was right down in the corner of the blue panel. Later on, I stamped a little push word from a lawn fawn set in black ink. It's subtle, but it's there so the recipient knows that the card is interactive. Once that's all done, then I cut a long strip of foam tape and I double it up. It's almost like building a shaker, but this time the thickness is to allow for the battery pack. I put pieces around the edges and I make sure none of it's covering up any of the holes and blocking the light from shining through. The final step is to put the whole thing down on the card base and test it. Isn't it pretty? And no, the paper clip is not part of the design. I was trying to figure out a way to keep the lights on without putting my hand in the frame so that I could actually take the photo. So that paper clip is just holding the switch down. My next card uses the Nativity Star layering set along with the bold striped stencil. Here's the card before I added the lights. This set has four layers to it, and I used three of them, just skipping layer B. I cut the top and bottom from white glitter cardstock and the middle layer from a deep blue. For my background, I used the same blue color combination as the previous card, but this time I did some stenciling with the bold stripe stencil. I masked it and placed it diagonally and blended ink through only three of the stripes. Then I turned the stencil and blended ink in the other direction. When I take the star off, you'll see how the center of these stenciled lines meet up and almost look like they're woven together. It's almost a shame to cover that up, but that's exactly where I need to cut my hole from the bottom die. After that, I follow the same steps of putting a piece of vellum behind the hole. This time I can use a smaller piece that just covers the hole, but I still need to make sure that I've got that shimmery side showing through the hole to the front. Then I glue the star into the vellum. Time to add the lights to the back of the card again. This time I glued the battery pack down first, and I think I found it easier to work with the lights and the wires by doing it this way. Again, I played around to determine where I wanted the three lights to show, I looped the wire down, and then added the doubled up foam tape around the edges. Then it was time to adhere it to my card base and test it out. I think this one is especially appropriate. Having light coming from the star in the Christmas sky is absolutely perfect. Again, you can see that paper clip holding the lights on, and maybe you can see the push stamp that I added so that the recipient knows what to do. For my third card, I changed up my color combination and I used only part of the Epiphany layer set. I made lots of cards with this set in a previous video and I'll link that in the end screen so you can see how many looks you can get with these dies. I created my little poinsettia by coloring the bottom two layers with Copic markers in deep reds and greens and then for my top layer, I wanted a gold sparkle to match the background. I didn't have any gold in my Twinkling Jewels card pack from Memory Box, but there was this kind of yellowy orange, and since the lines are so thin, it worked perfectly. My sentiment for this card is also from that Tidings wreath set. My background was Shea Butter, which is a pale yellow, and Sauna, which is a deep warm yellow, and then I kind of aged the edges a bit with Over Coffee, which is a mid-tone brown. And again, I spritzed the panel with water and I lifted it up to create some texture and interest. Now the first step is to cut a hole for the lights, but obviously this time I can't use the Epiphany die itself, but I was able to find a circle die that matched my poinsettia perfectly, and I used that instead. After that, it's all the same process. Cut the hole, add the vellum and glue in the die cut, and then place the lights. This poinsettia has six petals, so I place them in every other petal to spread the lights evenly by creating a kind of triangle. 
This time I marked the corner where I wanted to put the battery pack, but it was a bit of a waste since again I glued it down first. I really think this is the better way to work with it since it's in place and not pulling on the lights as it moves around. Again, I taped the lights in place, built my doubled up foam tape walls around the outside of my panel, and I glued it to the card base. And here's a close up of that final card. I think that the glow of lights really enhances that golden glow of the card front. And here's a quick clip of them all being lit up in the dark. I have no idea about photographing in the dark, so please don't look too closely. So what do you think about these cards? Do you have a favorite? Is this something you would consider making? Let me know in the comments below. I'm not saying you would ever try and mass produce these, but we all have those special people in our lives that deserve something magical. As promised, here's a link to that video where I created a bunch of different looks with the Birch Press Epiphany layering dies, as well as another light up card I made a little while ago. Check them out and let me know what you think. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.